Hey friends, in today's tutorial we'll be doing something so different from what we've been doing on the blog and I'll be showing you how to make this crochet rug in a very simple and step-by-step -step video. So for the materials you're going to need a tapestry or any canvas. This one is a non slip I really prefer you get the non slip one. A pair of scissors. Darning needle is not really necessary but you might need it and a 3mm crochet hook. I'm sorry I don't have it here at the moment but you'll need a 3mm crochet hook. 2mm will work just fine. 2.5 up to 3.25. You want to ensure that your hook goes through these holes easily. Another thing you're going to need a worsted weight yarn or a chunky yarn in different colors if you want a multi-colored one or one color if you're going to work one colored one. So let's just start our video. So for this tutorial we'll be using this canvas it's a 21 inch by 15 inch i'm using this one for the tutorial but you can use a bigger one or a smaller one depending on your preference and then i'll use this yarn it's seal three ply chunky it's a medium weight yarn and then for the hook size i'll use a number five or a 3.3.0 millimeter is okay so to begin you're going to start by working on the border to work on the border what you're going to do, you're going to start on the second row of your canvas. So your canvas has this small circle. So start on the second row and the second column. So skip the first row and the first column. Insert your hook here. Then you can pull your yarn and make a knot with the shorter end then return insert your yarn insert your hook in the same space again and grab the longer tail or the working yarn and make a simple chain go in the second space grab your yarn pull through pull it to the level of your canvas then work a single crochet then the next one yarn over pull through pull it to the level of your working yarn then yarn over pull through all those two loops so that's what you're going to repeat until you have two spaces remaining at the end of your row so you can notice I'm working on this shorter tail to avoid weaving it at the end so after working your border until this end and you have two spaces remaining you're going to work your last stitch there or your last border in the next space and after working your after working one single crochet you're going to repeat two more in the same space so insert your hook back grab your yarn pull through and then pull through the two loops then go back again grab your yarn pull through and make sure you pull it to the level of your canvas and then yarn over pull through the last two then go ahead in this other row so go in the next space mark your stitches so what you're going to do on this other side is the same thing that we did on this first side until you reach two stitches here at the end then work three work three stitches on that space so it's going to be this space here make sure you skip two two so it's going to be here work three stitches on this space then continue with this other side when you reach the second last you're going to work three stitches on the same space 
then continue in this bottom border so I'll meet you on this last space here so after I've gone all around your work and you have this last part remaining since you already have one stitch there we're going to work only two stitches and then what you're going to do you're going to insert your yarn so you're going to insert your hook on this first stitch yarn over pull through then pull through this other loop then chain one and cut your yarn so what you're going to do with this loose end you're going to fit it in your yarn needle and then just weave it inside And that is done you can cut this end so this is how the border should look like now the next step you're going to start by working on any corner so after working my border I went ahead and did two-thirds of the mat I recorded the video but I lost my footage anyway there's nothing much that you've lost I'll just show you how to do it on this side so the reason I drew these simple curves is to show you how to change colors when you're working on such a mat and you can go ahead and draw intricate designs or detailed designs depending on your preferences or you can just leave it as plain for your first mat. So one thing you want to ensure is you're working on short rows. Remember our mat was 21 inches by roughly 15 inches across so you want to work it on the short rows. So grab your hook and then you want to go because you're working on the short rows so identify the second row that you're going to work on don't work on this edge row or the border row go in this second row and then insert your hook on the very last space on that border then pull it through the next space this is how you're going to do it Then grab your yarn, yarn it over your hook, pull it through that space and then to bind off this first stitch or the first yarn, you're going to wrap your short end over your hook and then pull it through that loop we just made. Then tighten it. That easy. And then after, done, after you've done that, you're going to go in the next space or the space with our working yarn go inside it and pull your hook on the next space grab your yarn pull it through so you want to pull it through until you achieve your desired length of the loops so mine is approximately 1.25 to 1.5 inches you can do it shorter or longer depending on your preference then go in the next space with your yarn, pull it through the next one, yarn over, pull through, pull it to your length and repeat that until you reach the end of your color. If you're working a color work, if you're not working in colors, you can just go ahead to the end of your row. So just repeat that inserting your hook in that space with your yarn and then pulling it through the next space then yarning over grabbing your yarn pulling it through to make your loop you want to ensure that your loops are of the same size but this is not really necessary because you're going to trim them at the end of your work
so my color ends here that's when I'm that's where I'm going to end with my loops so on this last stitch you want to tighten or to bind off your work to do that just yarn over as usual then pull it through don't pull it to your height then grab the grab the yarn again and pull it through that small loop then pull it to a desired length then take your scissors and just cut all the loops simple as that remove your yarn and tighten this one so I was getting some questions if these loops can come off the doesn't because we're working on one loop or one strand of yarn from the beginning to the end so we've bound it so we've locked it at this end and at the beginning you can try you can pull it as much as you like but they don't come off you see if you pull it too tight you can end up ripping the canvas so this is to confirm to you that it doesn't come off so I'll just repeat that one more time take your needle or your hook insert it in the first loop or the first space on your bottom border and then pull it through the next space grab your yarn pull it through that space and then the shorter tail you want to yarn it over your hook and pull it through that loop that you've just created then pull it through to tighten it go right ahead in the next space with your yarn pull it through the next space grab your yarn pull through ensure it's the same height as our first loops here or our first row of loops you'll get used to this one as you work them so don't worry about making them same height so again if you're working in different colors and you've reached the end of your working color you're going to lock it so yarn over pull through pull through a very small loop then yarn over pull through pull it to your desired height then release your hook and cut your loops Then remove your yarn and lock this one tightly so that's how you do it to add a new color what you're going to do you're going to grab your color or your yarn then you're going to insert your hook in that last space here so insert it there then grab your yarn pull through wrap the shorter tail on your hook pull through that loop then tighten it then you're just going to proceed with our pattern by drawing loops until the end of your new color again you reach the end of that color insert your hook in that last loop or the last spaces yarn over pull through just pull a small loop yarn over pull through that small loop and pull it to your size or your length then go ahead and cut those yarns very simple let's do it one more time here insert your hook in that last space pull it through the next space grab your yarn pull it through pull through the shorter tail tighten it then continue drawing loops in each space so that's how you change colors from one to the next so I'll go ahead and work these two rows up to here with the new color and then I show you how to work on long rows remember this is a long row and our hook can't hold all the loops from this point to the edge here so as usual insert your hook then grab the shorter tail pull it through 
and lock it by making a knot. Then continue pulling loops to your this side lay. Make sure they are approximately equal in height. So just make until you have enough loops on your hook and then I'll show you how to proceed from there. So when you feel you have enough loops on your hook, you can release your hook and then leave the last or the last two loops and continue drawing loops. So you want to draw loops to this very last space here. So do not finish it off here. You're going to finish it on this very last space at the border. So insert your hook, wrap your yarn around it, pull through a small loop, and then pull through another loop. Then you can cut that last stitch, remove your yarn, and lock it. So at this point, just go ahead and cut your loops. So this is how your work should look like. What you're going to do is just go ahead and finish all the remaining loops. And I'll show you my work when it's completely done. So this is how the back looks like. You can see it's very neat. So I went ahead and finished my work and this is how it looks like. It looks so pretty. So at this point, what you can do, you can go ahead and trim your mat because there are some places that are longer than the rest so for instance this aging here you can go ahead and just make sure it lines with the others and then you trim the longer ones so I did most of my trimming before this video and I just left a small bit to show you how to do it. So that's all you need to know. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section below. So thank you so much for watching. If you watch it till the end, I really appreciate it. If you have any question regarding how to make this mat, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer to each and every one of you. And until next time, please stay safe. Don't forget to subscribe and bye.